Hey everyone, so um, today I'm going to present you a paper um, proposed this summer uh, by researchers from Zhejiang University. There is called um, one shot object pose estimation without CAD models. Um, this paper proposes a new promising approach uh, for an object pose estimation task. Um, you know, this task is popular enough, especially in uh, augmented reality applications um, or in robotics. And um, nowadays, there are many approaches uh, to, to handle this task. Therefore, I would like to start with clarifying some benefits of uh, the one pose relative to other DL-based approaches. So, um, first of all, <clears throat> It doesn't rely on CAD model, while high quality CAD models of everyday objects are often inaccessible. Another advantage is that it handles arbitrary types of objects without instance or um, category level separating. On the figure, you um, may see this comparison. Um, talking about its usage, it uh, has much faster runtime. And probably the coolest thing is that it requires um, only a simple RGB video scan as an input. Okay, um, <coughs> sorry. Let's dive into the proposed method. The authors uh, formulate the task as one-shot object pose estimation, where the objective is to estimate 6D pose of any object, given only a few annotated um, pose annotated images. So in order to estimate a pose of a specified object, it requires a video scan of the object and a test image sequence. That leads to a need for uh, several preliminaries, which we will discuss one by one. So first of all, uh, this video scan needs to be captured and annotated. And in order to define the canonical pose of the object, they propose to use um, AR two boxes like AR Kid or AR Core, which um, detect the object within a bounding volume. On the figure, you can observe this process, which lies in setting the object on the flat surface in a static position and collecting multiple video sequences, which are farther aligned according to the bounding box annotations. After the data capture and annotation, the pipeline uh, of the one pose is separated into the offline mapping phase and online localization phase. The online phase lies in the usage of structure from motion in order to reconstruct the sparse point cloud of the um, annotated video scan. And during SFM, uh, the correspondency graph of the object is built, where every 3D uh, point from the reconstructed point cloud uh, corresponds to a set of matched two-dimensional descriptors. In the online localization phase, there comes a new query image, which needs to be uh, localized and its two-dimensional descriptors are extracted. But um, here comes the task of uh, how to match obtained uh, 2D features with um, not yet descript 3D points from SFM. And here um, also comes um, the proposal of this work, uh, which lies in a direct 2D 3D matching between the query image and the SFM point cloud. At this step, um, authors propose to use graph attention networks. Firstly, these uh, 3D key points are descripted uh, by applying an aggregation operation over multiple two-dimensional features associated with <clears throat> a single 3D point. And instead of uh, simple averaging, authors propose to adaptively uh, preserve the most informative two-dimensional features. Oops. 
<laughs> and um, that is done by using the aggregation attention layer <clears throat> described with, uh, with the formula here. And further, authors decided to add uh, self and cross attention layers following the aggregation attention layer. That is a final attention group. I guess all these uh, formulas look messy. Therefore, I propose you to have a look uh, at the figure where the main intuition of each of these attention types uh, is to choose the most um, relevant features, such that, for example, the aggregation attention adaptively uh, choose the most relative two-dimensional uh, descriptors for describing a 3D point while the self and cross attention layers prompts feature to exchange um, information with each other thus uh, making the matching globally um, constant and um, probably uh, constant dependent finally uh, the output from the cross attention layer is used in order to extract uh, a matching confidence map it is obtained by using this uh, score matrix between the transformed uh, features. And after selecting a confidence threshold, this map becomes a matrix, which represents the 2D, 3D match predictions. Um, thus, um, the model is supervised with 2D, 3D point correspondences. And for the loss function, they used uh, the focal loss over the matching confidence map. Now we can uh, put it everything together. So uh, <clears throat> when the um, video scan um, of the object is made, it is reconstructed with um, SFM once. And during um, SFM, a correspondency graph is constructed with um, associates each 3D point with uh, a set of two-dimensional features. These two-dimensional features are aggregated with the aggregation attention layer into 3D um, descriptors. And when um, we receive a new query image, which needs to be localized in the object frame, its 2D features are extracted and passed through this graph attention network which predicts uh, 2D, 3D point correspondences. And finally, the object pose is computed by uh, solving the PNP problem. For um, the data set, authors collected multiple video uh, scans of the same object, put in um, different locations under um, different environments, resulting in uh, 450 video sequences of 150 objects. And for each object, uh, multiple video recordings are accompanied with camera poses and 3D bounding box annotations. And for the validation uh, set, each object is um, assigned with um, one mapping sequence for building the SFM map. And the rest of the sequences are used for the evaluation. And during uh, evaluation, the, they compared the, this one pose method with three baseline categories. As we see, it uh, outperforms instance and category level methods. And as for the visual localization baselines, it copes well with uh, large and uh, medium objects while um, being 10 times uh, faster. And here are some qualitative comparisons with the uh, baseline methods. Uh, you may observe that one pose is able to produce a larger quantity of matches compared, for example, with uh, plus nearest neighbor. And the matches uh, from the one pose are also um, more accurate and less noisy. On the other hand, we see that uh, super point plus super glue achieves um, similar results sometimes, um, but with uh, 10 
times higher runtime cost. So, and to briefly sum up, the one pose is the first uh, learning-based method that, that can um, stably detect and track poses um, of arbitrary category uh, objects um, in real time without a need of, uh, of CAD models. And it um, makes it more accurate and uh, faster than, than baseline methods. But it has some limitations as well. Since it relies on the local feature matching for pose estimation, it may um, fail when applied to textureless objects. Also, it still has difficulty to handle um, extreme change of scales between images in the video scan used for the SFM and the uh, testing uh, sequences. And uh, that's it. Thank you for attention. Thank you.